Hello, hello, hello. I am the Linux Mitch. Is your computer running slow? Is it sluggish? Don't go out and buy a new one. Don't throw away your old computer. One thing you could do is add some more RAM. But the best thing you could do is format the hard drive and install Linux. Wipe Windows right out. So today we're going to talk about it. So let's get to it. So today I'm running Windows 10 in a virtual machine. And one thing you want to do is open up this here, right click it on your start menu and open up task manager. And I'm going to make that large screen and we're going to go to performance. So in this Windows virtual machine, I gave it four processors and eight gigs of RAM. So we can see up here, the CPU usage is pretty low. Now I don't have any programs opened up in it. It's just Windows that was freshly reboot. Actually, I opened it up earlier and I updated it and it took over two hours to update it, which will never happen with Linux. And you can see, and of course, it, I rebooted it after updating it. So I'm using two gigs of RAM out of seven. So you can see I have 7.7 uh, .7 gigs of RAM. It's running on two gigs of RAM, even though there are no programs opened up. And if you look down here, it's so it was 1.9 gig is being used. And I have 5.7 gig available. So that's my gig. Now, if you go to the CPU, you can see I have four processors. Now, a lot of people that make Linux YouTube videos, a lot of them have uh, 32 gigs of RAM or 64 gigs of RAM. Some of them have 12 processors or, or 24 processors. In my main computer, where I'm running Arch Linux, and it's the computer that I do all my videos on. In that computer, I have 16 gigs of RAM, a two terabyte hard drive, and four processors. And that's it. And I'm able to make videos and post videos, make, I'm able to record videos, edit them, and post them to YouTube, and so forth. So, really, you don't need a super powerful computer. And actually, when I first started using Linux three years ago, my computers only had four gigs of RAM in them. And with four gigs of RAM, I was able to run Linux Mint smoothly, quickly, and it was snappy. I was able to run MX Linux on those computers, and it ran fantastic. I was able to run Manjaro. And then eventually, I was able to run vanilla Arch Linux. The computers ran beautifully. They were fast, snappy. I never ran out of RAM and they were, only had four gigs of RAM and four processors. Then I updated, eventually I updated to seven gigs of RAM and on one of my computers, sorry, not seven gigs, eventually I updated to eight gigs of RAM on my computers and my main production computer has 16 gigs of RAM. So, like I was saying, if your computer is running sluggish, you don't want to go out and buy a new computer. What you want to do is install Linux. Unless, of course, you have lots of money to spend. So, I only opened up this screen in Windows just to show you in case you're not technical and you're not good with computers, just to show you how you can see what your computer has. Now, you can always look at the sticker on the box because usually on Windows computers and store-bought computers there's a sticker on the box that's going to tell you what your hard drive is, how many processors you have, how many gigs of RAM you have and so forth. But if the sticker is gone for some reason, the label isn't there, then you can go into here and you can see I have four processors and I have uh, 7.7 .7 gig of RAM, which is really considered 8 gig of RAM. And right now, without any having any programs opened, I'm using 
two and a half gig of RAM. Now, another thing to point out when I'm running Arch Linux with a window manager and no programs opened, it's only using maybe uh, 300 meg, 250 to 300 meg, fit, sorry, it's using 250 to 300 megabytes of RAM. If I have a desktop environment open, like Cinnamon Desktop, it could be using 500 megabytes of RAM. If I'm running Linux Mint Debian, and Debian always uses a bit more RAM, I might be using 800 megabytes of RAM to one gig of RAM. So anyways, I just opened up this so you can see exactly what you have in your computer. And what you wanna do is open up your web browser and you wanna type in Rufus, and you want to go to the official website for Rufus, and you want to scan down to download. And we're going to download Rufus 3.21. And it already downloaded. Wow, that was quick. And we're going to type in Linux Mint. And we're going to go to Linux Mint homepage. And we're going to download. Now, Linux Mint has uh, three, actually four types that you can download. So we're just going to click on download. And here you can see they have uh, Linux Mint 21.1 as recommended. If you click it on, there's three types. There's the Cinnamon Edition, which is their flagship edition. There's their Mate, which is not as nice looking, but it's still nice. And it uses a little less uh, RAM and less CPU and less guts when you're running it. And their latest version is XFCE. It comes with the XFCE edition. It's also, it's very, very light. Now, it's not as beautiful as the cinnamon, but it's not as heavy to run. So those are the three editions. And most people that use Linux Mint like the cinnamon edition. Now, there's another one. It's a fourth one. And let's hit download again. And let's go to, oops, keep up that menu. Let's go to LMDE. So Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu, and which is also based on Debian. So in this LMDE version, they totally bypass Ubuntu and it's just based on Debian. Now when you're running it, it looks the same. You wouldn't know the difference. Now in the Debian edition, they don't have um, the three flavors. They only have one flavor and that's the cinnamon flavor. They don't have the mate flavor or the XFCE flavor, and actually I shouldn't really call them flavors, they're desktop environments. So we're going to download that. I'm going to click on here, you're going to go to download. Then you're going to pick a mirror. So I'm in Canada, so I'm going to pick Canada. I'm going to pick the University of Waterloo Computer Science Club mirror. You click it on and it's downloading. Okay, so finished downloading. That took about two and a half to five minutes. I don't know why it took so long, because usually downloads a lot faster. But I guess you can't complain about two and a half to five minutes. So anyways, it downloaded. So I'm going to close my web browser. And what you want to do is plug in a USB thumb drive into your computer. And of course, you want to make sure there's nothing on there that you need because it's going to erase everything that's on your thumb drive and it's going to install a live bootable version of Linux Mint onto the thumb drive. So if you need anything on that thumb drive, uh, get another thumb drive or transfer those files to somewhere else. Just know that when you plug the thumb drive in and you put it onto the thumb drive, it's going to erase everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a bootable thumb drive, a live version of Linux Mint. So we're going to open up our file manager. 
And here you can see my thumb drive is right here, USB-E. I can click it on, there's nothing on, because I reformatted it before I made the video. So I have an empty thumb drive here. And what you're going to do is you're going to go up to Downloads. And here you can see is my Linux Mint ISO. And here is Rufus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Rufus. And it's going to take a moment to open. Yes. Let's just click on yes. So, Rufus is open. So, what I'm going to do is, you can see right here, it's showing my thumb drive. Now, my thumb drive is over here, and it has no label because when I formatted it before I turned on the video, I didn't give it a label. But you can see it's in here, it's in drive B, USB drive E. So, you can see it's already connected to it. No label, E, 8 gig. Now I'm going to select a uh, my Linux Mint ISO. I got my thumb drive here. You can see it there. I have a disk or ISO image, please. Now you can open up this. I could do non-bootable, free DOS, but you don't want to do those. You want to do this one. Disk, ISO image. Then I'm going to click on this one. And it opens up my menu and it opens up right to there. So let's just click that on. My Linux Mint Cinnamon. I'm going to open it. And you can see here, it's here. So if you click on here, it even tells you, start the formatting operation. This will destroy, oop, that disappeared. This will destroy any data on the target. Okay. So let's click on start. So we're just going to follow them. It's going to write the ISO image mode, and we're just going to follow the recommended. So we're going to click OK. It's giving you some more warnings than that. We're going to click Yes. We're just going to click OK. And it's formatting. It's reformatting the thumb drive. And it's taking the iOS image of Linux Mint, making a live bootable version of Linux Mint on my thumb drive. So what this enables you to do is you'll be able to take this thumb drive, plug it into a computer, boot into it. And the way you're going to boot into it is you're going to turn your computer off. You're going to plug the thumb drive in. Then you're going to turn your computer on. And just as your computer is going on, you're going to hit probably F12. Some computers are F11. Some computers you have to hit delete. Some computers you have to hit escape. But a lot of computers are F12. So you're going to hit click. You're going to click on F12 and it's going to bring up a menu. And when it brings up the menu, you're going to highlight and enter the option to boot into your thumb drive. And when you boot into your thumb drive, what it's going to do is it's going to bring up Linux Mint. It's going to boot you into an actual version of Linux Mint. And you can play with it. You can use it. You'll be able to go on the internet. You can see what programs and software are installed in it by default. And if you decide it's not for you, you can just turn your computer off, pull out the thumb drive, and nothing will be lost. Your Windows will still be installed on the computer, regardless of w whether it's Windows 7, 10, or 11. And actually, you shouldn't be using Windows 7 because it's no longer supported. <laughs> but you'll be able to shut your computer off, pull the thumb drive out, turn your computer back on, and boot into your Windows, and everything will be as it was. If you decide you like it, you can click on an icon and it will actually install Linux Mint on your computer. Now, it gives you the option to dual boot. I wouldn't do that. I have dual booted. I did dual boot three years ago for a few weeks, but I didn't keep it. I, I ended up erasing Windows out of my computer and putting Linux Mint in. 
I, any of the Linux people that I follow on YouTube, the Linux teachers that know a lot more about Linux and computers than I do, they all recommend against dual booting. Because if you dual boot, there's going to come a time when Windows is going to do an update and it's going to destroy your boot menu and you won't be able to get into your computer. Now, it won't damage your hard drive. You'll still be able to get in if you do a fresh installation of Windows or a fresh installation of Linux. But then you're going to have to go through a process of doing a fresh installation. So most people recommend against dual booting. So when you boot into it, it's going to give you an option to install it. If you want to, you can install it. And uh, it's easy. So anyways, uh, this is still creating the ISO. It's taking a little bit of time. So I think I'm going to pause the video and come back when it's finished. Okay, I'm back. And it's done. Now, come to think of it, I used an old thumb drive which is a USB 2. And the reason why I used it is because it's an old thumb drive. I don't have anything on it. And it's just a thumb drive I use for experimenting with or playing with or doing things I want to do with it. But I probably should have used a USB 3. And I would suggest if you're going to do this, if you have USB 3 slots, you should use a USB 3 thumb drive because it will be a lot faster. So this process took about probably close to 10 minutes and it shouldn't have it should have only taken two minutes three to maybe five at the most so it took twice as long because i used this old usb 2 thumb drive anyways we're done so what you could do is close let's close file manager and what you're going to do is shut down Windows. I'm just going to power down. You can restart, but I'm just going to shut it right down. So you're going to shut down or restart Windows. And when it's booting, you're going to press F12, F11, Escape, Delete, until it brings up your boot menu. If it boots into Windows, try again. And when it brings up your boot menu, you're going to boot into your live thumb drive. Now, if it doesn't allow you to do it, you may have to go into your BIOS and you may have to boot into the BIOS and go through all the uh, different types of settings where until you find secure boot and you might have to turn off secure boot. Turn off secure boot then reboot into the thumb drive. You only have to do that if it's not letting you do it. So in this video, I talked about what to do when your computer is slow. You can add more RAM, or one of the best things you can do is get rid of Windows, wipe it out, and put in Linux. And I showed you how to make a live thumb drive. I showed you how to download Rufus, which is a software program, that you can use to make your thumb drive and I showed you how to make a live ISO thumb drive with Linux Mint on it. In the next video I'm going to show you how to install Linux Mint and in the third video I'm going to show you how I like to change Linux Mint and how I all the programs I download into it and how I use it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did please like it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I am the Lennox Mensch.